appreciate Archie. He don't know what to do, but I do. I appreciate it. That was really good, Archie. And it is a beautiful day for the Lord to come again. My goodness, I'm glad to see everybody tonight. Uh, along with the prayer request, pray for families that are hurting. We have families in the church that are hurting. You know, I really believe we're in the last days, and I believe Satan's doing all that he can to destroy us, to just to get us down. I never will forget one time when I was pastoring Liberty Baptist Church. Boy, the church was doing good. We was having over 100 on Sunday nights, and, and uh, boy, people were just getting saved. And, and, and within a week's time, a young man, 37 years old, fell dead with a heart attack, a member of our church. And then that same uh, week, a lady in the church... Uh, had an aneurysm and she's paralyzed to this day and it really had a devastating effect on the church satan will do anything he can to throw a wrench in the cogs and so let's be lifting up those people in our church that are going through trials and 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 th the other day when marion called and said he'd been in an accident i thought man what else i mean you know it's just like satan's doing all he can to to to, to get us down because see he knows his time's short you know i, I was uh, thinking about the song we were singing because he lives I want to read the chorus because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth a living just because he lives you know it's one thing to know the future it's another thing to hold the future our God not only knows the future he holds the future he controls the future and I'm thankful that we serve a God that holds the future, aren't you? I'm certainly glad that we're not at the mercy of the elements. And I do have an announcement to make. Very shortly now, there's go all across this land, there's going to be a big fire sale on church property. I mean, you can just get it for about whatever you want to pay because the Lord's just going to take us all out and there's just going to be a bunch of empty buildings and parking lots for these Sunday mornings and... And uh, so if y'all uh, don't plan on going with us and you have a little money to, you can really buy this property up really worth the money. Although I'll admit that there'll be a lot of churches that'll just go on business as usual. They won't even know the rapture occurred. But uh, I don't know who's going to be in charge of this one once we're gone. But uh, uh, you, we, tonight we have a business meeting and we'll just, we'll just authorize you just to get whatever you can out of it. We really don't care because we'll be through with it. I'm glad the Lord is coming again, aren't you? And I'm really glad that we don't have to go through that horrible tribulation period. Turn, if you will, to Revelation. Archie asked me if I was going to preach on Revelation tonight. I don't know how in the world he guessed that, but <laughs> I guess because I have been now for quite some time. Now, I know that we, we come down into chapter 9, about six verses, but I want to back up the 13th verse of chapter 8. Because I just kind of tacked that on, and I want to try to cover chapter 9 tonight. We may run just a little bit late, but Kathy tells me that we don't have hardly any business meeting. I mean, any business. Is that right? All right. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Okay, I'm not loud enough. All right. I thought I was loud enough for everybody. An angel is going to fly through heaven. John said, I saw him saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. Because of the rest of the, the tribulation that's coming on the world. Now, we've already, this is the seventh, this is the, the, the seventh, uh, we've already gone through the, the six seals. This is part of the seventh seal. The earth has already gone through a horrible tribulation. But this angel says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now look what's coming on the earth. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven into the earth, and I, to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now this uh, angel that fell is none other than Satan himself. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was of the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Now, I've never been struck by a scorpion. 
Uh, have any of you people ever been struck by a scorpion? Now, it's my understanding that the sting of a scorpion affects the nerves. And they say that is one of the most painful things that you can endure. Uh, Jerry Minton said he'd been struck two or three times by scorpions, one time on the neck. And, uh, boy, they say it is just horrible. I mean, you have pain with it, my understanding, sometimes for days. It's just a very traumatic thing. Now, imagine Satan and open the bottomless pit. Millions of these scorpions come out, and they, and, and they just go, just, they just swarm you. They just swarm you. Uh, I told the episode about how I used to throw uh, uh, rocks at wasp nests, and I've been stung, but I've never been sworn. But I've known people that, that have, uh, that have uh, kicked up a, a uh, well, what kind of, a hornet, a hornet's uh, nest or something in the ground, or, or uh, that, like they'll turn over a clod, and they say they'll just swarm you. And that's the way it'll be, and people will be stung by these things for five months. The only ones that won't be stung are the ones that have God's seal in their forehead. Now, it'll be such a horrible, terrible time, but the Bible says these people will not be allowed to die. Now, won't that be something? People will seek death. People will try to commit suicide, but poison won't work. Nothing will work. They'll hang themselves and just, they'll just hang there and choke. They'll try to kill themselves with a knife or shoot themselves with a gun and death will flee from them. And I was talking to Ken about this last week. Death is not an event. Death is a person. See, a lot of people don't realize that. If you remember there in Egypt, God told them to put the blood above the, the, the door and on both sides of the door and the death angel came through and, and took all of those that didn't have the blood above the door. Death shall flee from them. And in those days shall men seek death. They'll seek it. Now people run from death. Now there's a few people that seek it and they commit suicide. But it says they shall seek death and shall not find it. And shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Now that's going to be a horrible time. When pe people are in such agony. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses. Now it says they weren't horses. But they were like unto horses. They resembled a horse. Now he gives the description. They're like horses prepared into battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns of gold, and their face were as the faces of men, and they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Now keep in mind that John has seen something that we've never seen. Now let's say, for instance, uh, he could go back. Now, now I'm not saying that, 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 that these are helicopters or anything, because I don't believe they are. I believe they're demons. But keep this in mind. If you could go back 300 years... And if you saw what we saw today, how would you describe it? How would you describe a helicopter? See, you'd probably, if you'd never seen one before and all of a sudden there was a helicopter and it had guns and missiles and shooting fire and so forth, you'd say, well, it's kind of like some kind of a horrible uh, insect and uh, it sprays something out that kills people. And, uh, you know, you wouldn't have, well, now see, John is looking at all of this and, and he says, here's what it's like. He says, I can't tell you what it is, but I can describe what it looks like. And I know those things, it doesn't say how big they are, but evidently they're small. Evidently they're small, uh, like locusts, but look at them. Uh, they, uh, they're, 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 their body is like a, a horse prepared into battle, and they have a head, and the head is like crowns of gold, and their faces were the faces of men, and they had... Hair is the hair of women. I think we have some of that running around today, don't you? I've seen a lot of guys running around today with long hair. So you have an idea of what they look like. Only, uh, they have uh, teeth like lions. And they had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of men and horses running to battle. Can you imagine how terrified that you would be when you see these things swarming? I remember one time when I was a little kid. Oh, I say a little kid. I was old enough to ride go to Tulsa by myself. I must have been about 18 years old. I, well, <laughs> hey, you don't know my mama. She let me out of the house till 17. But I, I rode over to Tulsa in the summertime, and I rode over on the streetcar, and I come out. I went to one of those stores, and I came out, and, and I don't know what in the world was going on, but I mean the sidewalks and the sides of the building were literally covered with big black beetles. Have you ever seen that happen before? They were everywhere. I mean, all over downtown Tulsa. There's all over the sides of the building. There's all over the sidewalks. People was stepping on them. Now, just imagine, if you can, 
if these things were these, these uh, locusts from hell, and they all had the power to sting and to torment you, now you just imagine as you hear these things coming, just a loud roar of them. I mean, that would scare me to death. And then they just sting and they keep stinging and you can't die and you try to die and you try to kill yourself and nothing it can deliver you from that torment. And they had tails like into scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, that's Satan, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon, that's Satan's name. And he says, one woe is past, and behold, there comes two woes more Hereafter. Now that's bad enough. That's bad enough to go through all the woes, but when we get through them, we're going into the bold judgments. I don't, uh, you know, I just don't see how men can stand it. Now notice this next part though. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Now these aren't good angels. These are no doubt fallen angels because they're bound. And he says, loose them. Now, where are they located? In the great river Euphrates. Now, you, right in that area is where the Garden of Eden was. That's where sin began, right there. And that's where these, these angels were bound. And it says, and the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year. Now, what that means is this. They were prepared for that hour and for that day, and for that month, and for that year. Like the song says, he holds the future. He knows what he's doing. And he says they were there just for that purpose, for that hour, for that day, for that month, and for that year. For to slay the third part of men. Now the, uh, the locusts couldn't slay, all they could do was torment. But these are sent to kill. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000,000. Now, that is 200 million. Now, if you would take an army of two million men, or 200 million men, that would be an army, if you, would, if you would line them up, that would be a mile wide and 87 miles long. What an army of men. Although these are demons also. These are demons right out of hell. Now, Jude, Jude tells us, we know this, we know that there's demons loose now. But some of the, the fallen angels are in chains. They're, they're in chains. Now, whether it's revered, uh, referred to them or not, that they were released from hell, I don't know. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. Now, there was some kind of a demonic uh, horse that they ride, some kind of a diabolical horse that they ride, and, uh, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jasoneth and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three, by the fire, smoke, and the brimstone, was the third part of men killed by the fire and the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were likened to serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. Now, I want to turn over here to Joel. If you will turn to Joel. Let's read what Joel said. First chapter of Joel. And he describes these last days and the tribulation period. Alas, the 15th verse, first chapter. Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Is not the meat cut off before our eyes? Yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. The seed is rotten under the clods. The garners are laid desolate. The barns are broken down, for the corn is withered. How do the beasts groan? The herds of cattle are perplexed because they have no pasture. Yea, the flocks of sheep are made desolate. O Lord, to thee will I cry, for the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame hath burnt all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field cry also unto thee, for the rivers of waters are dried up, and the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. 
Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a, cloud of, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there shall not, uh, not be ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them. In other words, he calls these demons, demon, uh, these demons a strong people. He said, there's never been anybody like them before. Notice, a fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. In other words, when this, this 200 million army of demons come through, it just literally destroys everything in its path. Everything. It says the world is like the Garden of Eden, but when they go through, then it's just nothing but desolation. I mean, they destroy everything in their path. Now, notice this. The appearance of them as the appearance of horses, as they horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for his strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Listen, I'll tell you what, I do not want to be here when the tribulation period occurs. You talk about terror on the earth. Uh, listen, I know this. I know that, uh, that we've had plagues and we've had locusts and we've had all kinds of stuff like that, but the world has never seen nothing like this demonized army. 200 million uh, 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 strong army that's going to just cover the earth and it'll kill a third of the inhabitants of the earth. And the rest of the men, which were not killed by these, these plagues, yet repented not of their works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. I can't believe it. That is hard to believe. After all this that has come upon the world and now this, this demonized army has come through and literally butchered a third of the population, and it says people still don't repent. Now let's see what they don't repent of. Neither repented they of their murders or of their drugs nor of their fornication nor of their thefts. That's what the word, by the way, sorcerers, comes from the word pharma. Let's see, I'm trying to think exactly what the Greek word is. But it, we get the word pharmacy from it. Drugs. Drugs. Man, I mean, there's drugs today. There's drugs. President Bush is declaring a war on drugs. I want to tell you something, he's losing they're everywhere. And men, no, even though this horrible tri tri tribulation period comes on the earth, they still don't repent of all their sins. They continue to take their drugs. They continue to live the lifestyle they live. Now notice something. Listen, I don't know. I'm getting old, I guess. I'm getting old. But when I, Wayne and I, I don't know about Wayne, but when I was 16 years old, I didn't know what drugs was. Now, I know they had them. I'm not so stupid enough to know they didn't have them. But not in Sand Springs. I didn't know of them. I never will forget one time I went to the Harmony Theater with Jesse Pridgen, a friend of mine. And we was out there in the lobby, and there was a guy there from California. He was a little older than us. He might have been 20 years old. We was about 16. And boy, he was really bragging. He said, out there in L.A., we got something called marijuana. And I said, what's that? And he told me about it. Man, we were, boy, we was taking all that. Now it's everywhere. Drugs are everywhere. Everywhere. Notice this. No, they're fornication. They're fornication. You know, nowadays, young people live together. Now, when I was a kid, we called it shacking up, and it was wrong. It was a sin to do. But now it's acceptable. See? 
But now notice, even though horrible tribulation period comes on them, they still don't get up, give up their illicit sex and they don't give up their drugs. They continue to rob and steal and murder and blaspheme God. It's going to be a horrible time on earth. But I think God will be up there. I'll tell you what, and I'm glad we'll be up there because I've had about all I want of it down here. I've, had, I've just about had it up to here with what goes on. I got what I don't even like to turn the news on anymore. I mean, it's sickening. It's sickening. And the world is getting worse and worse and worse and worse. More and more drugs. They can't stop it. It's everywhere. It's in our schools. It's in the homes. It's in the stores. It's on the street. I, know, and I want to tell you something. People are taking drugs that you'd never dream of taking drugs. I'm not kidding. People take dr drugs that you'd never dream take drugs. I want to tell you something. If someone's taking alcohol, you can smell it. Now, I, listen, I've never been around alcohol, and unless somebody falls down in front of me, I don't even know if they're drinking. Now, people that have been around, they say, boy, that guy's been drinking. I say, oh, really? You know, I mean, they'll be going like this. I won't know what's wrong. I, I'm, just, I'm just naive. I don't even know it, you know, and I sure don't know people taking drugs. Now, some people can spot it. They can say, hey, I think he's on drugs with his eyes or whatever, see. But listen, it's heading up. Can't you see it? More and more of this coming on the scene all the time. More and more drugs and new kinds of drugs. New kinds of drugs. At first it was just marijuana. Okay, then it was cocaine. Then it was hairpin. Now they got a rock or crack or whatever they call it. I don't know. What, I don't know. And I don't even care what they call it. It's garbage. But they got all that kind of stuff. And I was talking to a guy the other day and they said something about, well, people want to try it, you know. How they get hooked is they just want to try it, you know. I want to tell you something. That's Russian roulette. I've never had any desire to try a Russian roulette. Even one. Oh, come on, Mary. Try it once. Come on, try it. Just put it up there and pull the trigger one time. That's what you do when you take drugs. Well, I'll just try it once. I know the whole world's going to hell. I know they're all hooked on it, but I'm going to try it one time. I want to tell you, I might be cruel, but I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for people hooked on that stuff. I just don't, because they know what it will do to them. They know, and they're cold-bloodedly taking that stuff, knowing that they're going to get hooked on it. Now, I know, I know they say, well, it won't affect me. Come on, you know better than that. You know it'll affect you. It's hooked everybody else that's ever messed with the stuff. All I can say is you better leave it alone. You better leave it alone. But listen, that's part of the tribulation period. More and more drugs and more and more sex. And I'm going to tell you, you can't hardly turn on the TV anymore when it's all kinds. Listen, and it's accepted. It's accepted. On TV, they promote it. That's fine. Y'all just going to live together for a while? Just live together a while. Listen, that's called fornication. That's fornication. The Bible says people who do that are going to hell. They're going to hell. And that's the reason the tribulation is coming on the earth because of people that disregard the laws of God and will not let him rule over them. And that's exactly why there's going to be a tribulation period. I'm also thankful for the blood of the Lamb. Because, listen, none of us deserve salvation. None of us. But, listen, once we are saved, we can clean up our act. I believe we ought to clean up our act when we're saved. I believe there ought to be a change. I believe we ought to act different and live different after we're saved. I just believe that. Look, but they didn't, they didn't repent of their murders. They're not willing to change their lifestyle. They're not willing to call out to God for forgiveness. They're still in open rebellion against God. They didn't repent of their murders or their, or their drugs, nor their fornication, nor of their thefts. Listen, what else can God do but judge the world? I'm glad this whole world ain't going to just keep going like it's going right now. I'm glad there's going to be heaven. I'm glad there's going to be heaven. And I'm glad that everybody's there is going to be perfect. It's going to be nice when it's going to be day. They, the, uh, the day come when there ain't bars on the corner and there ain't guys selling dope and all that kind of garbage. It's going to be nice when the day comes there's no more filthy bumper stickers and filthy t-shirts and you don't hear people cursing all around you and you turn on the television even cartoons are taking God's name in vain. That day's coming to a close. Boy, and I believe it's heading up fast. Did you know in 1882 there were only 25,000 Jews in Israel? That's all. Today, there's 3,500,000 Jews in Israel. 
God says in the last day, He said, I'm going to say to the north, give up. And say to the south, give up. And to the east and the west. And He said, I'm going to bring my people back in Israel. Listen, we're living in that day. It's heading up. And praise God for it. Like I said, I hope we get through the book of Revelation before He comes. And if I thought for sure He would, I'll hurry. We'll stay late and cover three or four chapters at a time. But I'll tell you what, I, I'll tell you what, I'm anxious. I'm, I'm anxious and I'm ready for the Lord to come and take the church out. And if you're not anxious and if you're not ready, all I can say is I just feel sorry for you. And, and we're going to sign the church property over to you when we're gone. It's yours. You can have it. You can do whatever you want to with it. Of course, it's going to burn up anyway, so <laughs> you better take out a lot of fire insurance. Of course, I don't know where you're going to put the money. It'll burn up too. Maybe you just better get saved and come go with us. That's probably the best way to do it. <laughs> yeah. Let's stay and sing Amazing Grace, then we'll go into our business meeting.